thanks to the grace of the heaven, the transmitters, uh, uh, grand predecessor, predecessors, transmitters, and everyone here for this opportunity to introduce Maitreya. As a Westerner, Maitreya, I have no idea who it is, right? Maitreya. How many people know who Maitreya is? Not a lot, right? Yes, we do. Right? But we know him. Uh, there's many names, many names. Uh, Sanskrit Maitreya a Maitreya Kavalana. Okay, I cannot say that Maitreya word. Or Maitreya. Is also known as Happy Buddha or Laughing Buddha or Milo, Milofa or Milar. Also as known as Ajita, Ajita. Uh, Ajita is probably more famous in, in other countries, not over um, us. Um, so, anyway, Ajita Bodhisattva, keep in mind, Moche is not Buddha yet. Okay? He's a, just a Bodhisattva at this time. Um, but he will be a Buddha uh, eventually. So, for our temple right now, if you look at the middle of the, of the altar, right, you see a happy Buddha. And that is Maitreya. And so, who's Maitreya? Different forms of Maitreya. Remember, uh, Maitreya is just a title, a name. Uh, he has been reincarnated, reincarnated four times. So these are the forms that he appeared before. Um, so more statues, just many years ago. Um, you can see these statues everywhere, not just in China. Uh, some of them is in Korea, some of them is in Japan, some are in Vietnam. Uh, so they are scattered everywhere in uh, East Asia. And to carry on over to the uh, United States, over this side. Uh, this one also, uh, Maitreya in Korea. Uh, look skinny. Mm. So, but happy Buddha is not always uh, um, fat or Fat Buddha is also a nickname that he uh, received. So another, several more pictures of Maitreya. So, introduction. Maitreya means mercy and compassion. He is the Buddha of mercy and compassion. So when he comes, hopefully he will come. I'm not sure when, but during that time, uh, the whole world will be, be merciful and compassionate. The world peace will happen. Uh, original name is Aido. Well, what can I say Chinese? Uh, well, vowed to have the most loving kindness uh, of the Buddhists. He became vegetarian when he started cultivating. Uh, he was cultivating during the Sakyamuni uh, era. So he was uh, growing up uh, and, and reading the sutras during the Sakyamuni. So, so when Maitreya was born, he has a 32 full mass marks of a superior being. What are these 32 full superior being? I copy paste all the 32. It, it's a lot of them. Uh, one thing I noticed is the jaws of a uh, lion. Uh, his jaws a lion. But um, it was like very interesting. Okay, so, uh, so he has a house in Salai when he tastes food. Right when he put food in his mouth, the food tastes much better. So, <laughs> so he doesn't matter what he eats. So yes. whatever he is, but my thinking is, it's not just saliva. His mental ability is able to translate. Yeah, the food. So it's not the saliva in a way, but he's able to understand that food is more better. Um, so anyway, this all the information of the thirty-two of Supuri farms are online. Uh, if you want to go read them and understand what they are. Uh, but if you look at this thing, everything is symmetrical. symmetrical. And according to, um, um, I forgot the, the researcher, so he said, if your human body is very symmetry, has a large symmetry, you're a very beautiful person. Um, so they try to pick some like actors like uh, Brad Pitt and see his symmetry in his face, it's there or someone, a uh, famous actress, like they do also the same thing. Everything in the symmetry is there. Um, so, because he has the superior uh, marks of symmetry, he had 
promised to, um, um, what do you call um, make presentations to people because females would be too attached to his form. So during this part, he realized, okay, when I come back the next time, I cannot be this pretty or handsome. Because when he talks, people are not listening. They're just <laughs> looking, uh, appreciating for his way of looks. That's why Happy Buddha, you know, the, the he changed his form. Uh, so this is another form. So what else did I miss? Okay, that is not needed. Again, Buddha of the future. Right now, he is just a Bodhisattva. So when he comes back, he will be Buddha. Uh, so who said that? Sakyamuni. So Sakyamuni prophesied that Maitreya will be the next great Buddha. Maitreya is the Bodhisattva who will appear on earth in the future, achieve the complete enlightenment, and teach the pure drama, the Dharma. Uh, according to scriptures, Maitreya will be a successor to, to present. Present Buddha, Gautama Buddha, uh, Sakyamuni. The prophecy of the arrival of the Maitreya refers to the time of the future when the Dharma will have been forgotten in the whole world. <sighs> it's a terrible end. And then comes back again. So, world will end, and when Buddha comes, it was the world peace. It's, uh, so, he will have the, the, the task of bringing the world peace. Um, right now he resides in Tian Fo Yen, the inner abbey of Tucson Heaven. There's an inner and an outer uh, area. The inner is where the Buddhist houses, great Buddhas reside. The outer area is the people just wondering, they're still cultivating, I guess. Not at the, the level of, uh, of uh, enlightenment. Uh, Maitre Maitreya Incarnate in this world for other times before the time of Sakyamuni Buddha. Okay, so material Buddha will be the fifth universal Buddha and turn the wheel of Dharma. Wheel of the Dharma uh, basically um, incorporates of the, all the scriptures that we learn in the in the Buddha. There's the uh, four noble truths. I mean, eight noble truths, four noble truths, eight, fo eight noble paths. It, it's all there. I, I lost my uh, my notes here. Uh, we'll be reborn in Jamdiba when humanity reaches the lifespan of 80,000 years old. I don't know if 80,000 years old. Um, maybe. Again, in heaven, years, human life, it's not, it's very different. Uh, for us, maybe 80 years old, whatever they said there. So then probably just like a very short or different times. We will reach Buddhahood under the Luan tree in Garden of Huangling. Not exactly sure what that. Um, but I, I got that from the, one of the presentations. The oceans and the predict is predicted to decrease in size, allowing the material to transverse, transverse freely. Material will then reintroduce the true Dharma to the world. So imagine the whole ocean uh, sort of freezes, I guess. I don't know. And he'll be able to walk. Or, again, Buddha does not need to travel. He can walk on the water anyway. As a Buddha, he will come back again to truth, introduce the true Dharma. Hopefully, that will be coming soon. The world is not a good place right now. Uh, receiving the title of Maitreya Buddha. Sakyamuni Buddha foretold the, of the future when the world will be a heavenly place. World peace, yes. A special, boy, a special boy would be born in cultivating family. He would forsake worldly enjoyments, devote himself to cultivate and attain Buddhahood. Again, when Maitreya was born, he was, um, he was studying under Sakyamuni Buddha. He was, uh, I think, teenager at that time. Uh, he was very um, devoted to the sutras. Uh, I think he had, he uh, he read all the sutras. He, he he was able to understand all that at the age of sixteen. <sighs> age of sixteen, I'm like, oh, compared to him when you get to that age, um, he he vowed himself to uh, become the next Buddha. He, he dedicated his whole life. Yeah, Chiri heard his vow and to dedicate to the, to be the future Buddha. So. 
four incarnation of material in China. Um, I'm not going to talk all of them because if I did talk about all of them, it would take a whole lecture. So I'm going to just introduce a couple of them that we are familiar with. Uh, so in 400 to 569, he reincarnated as the Fu Da Si in Nanbei Dynasty as cloth bag monk or uh, fat Buddha or happy Buddha or laughing Buddha. Um, he was um, born in the Tang Dynasty between, I'm not sure the question marks, they could not find when he was born, but he life was spent to end in 916. Then he came back as the 13th Patriarch, Xu uh, Yan Hu, in the Qing, Qing Dynasty. Um, and then comes back again as the same 17th Patriarch. Um, also, I'm talking about a couple of them. So, two of them I'll be talking about. The Happy Buddha and the 17th um, Patriarch. Mm -hmm. This is one of the pictures of Putai Monk. This is the um, Thai Dynasty. The year is a little different, but I guess history is a little varies and depending on where you are. So, that's the one picture of him. This is um, in Vietnam. I'll say again. Happy Buddha is famous in different locations. So this is another picture. So <coughs> Maitreya is known as Laughing Buddha and or Happy Buddha. He was a uh, little overweight, I guess, and uh, <laughs> always carried a cloth sack. So there was a saying why he was overweight uh, and he was carrying a cloth sack. Um, he was um, absorbing all the beds that the human beings are being created. Uh, he saw that um, humans were not doing that well during that time. So to compensate for his looks, he decided to come back, become, absorb all the bats. All the bats that he absorbed in that time became part of his fat, I guess. Comes the sack and the, the, the baddie fat, um, the overweight part. Um, he was very profound and wise. Of course, all the Buddhas are, or Bodhisattvas. He could lie in, uh, oh, he could lie in the snow and get it wet. Um, he could predict people's future and also the weather. Um, in 1917, the cloth bag monk went to Ye Ling Temple and sat on the rock. The monks gathered around him, and he spoke his poem and peacefully passed away. So. That would be cool, right? You, you like um, lecturing and um, be able to let go anytime you want to go. Um, so that's the um, one of the uh, uh, poems that he was writing in the 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 temple. Okay, another incarnation of him was the seventeen picture. 17 patriarchs, Lu Zhang or Golden Elder. Uh, Golden Elder? I have a picture of him, I think. Yeah, Golden Elder. So, 17 patriarch. We are more familiar with him because it's th as time it gets close to us, we are more familiar because we have uh, his historical data. Uh, born on the 24th day of the fourth lunar month in 1848, grew up in poverty. Lost his parents early on, joined the army as a cook. Guy did the dreams to seek the 16th patriarch, the decree by God to be the 17th patriarch on the 15th day of the third lunar month in 1905. Uh, it, we know the 17th patriarch um, gave up a lot to become uh, what he is. Um, so we had to carry on what he did left of us. Uh, so, golden thread. Yeah, patriarch. Okay, fall the example of Maitreya. What is Maitreya? What most of the time we see Maitreya has what? A happy face, always smiling. Okay, you don't see a sad happy Buddha. I never saw a sad, happy Buddha is like sad or, you know, not smiling. Uh, broad minded, be forgiving, merciful, and compassionate. Carefree and always answer the needs of sentient beings whenever, whenever he could. Uh, 
we are in Y era. Uh, they got to in, in the inner abbey of Tucson to continue cultivating and will follow the material to be the reborn in the heavenly world of the earth. Okay, so I think there's a video I want to show. So this one is a very interesting I found on the internet. It's called Material Project. Uh, it started a while ago. Um, and this is doing, it's been done in um, India. Unfortunately, India has uh, infrastructure that does not support such a huge project. This project is supposed to be like uh, 200 acres. Um, and um, it's going to take a while. It started in 1993. The idea came in 93. 97, they said, okay, yes, let's make it official. Uh, they broke ground on 2003. Um, so in 2003, you could imagine, they started the project. Then, um, only in 2013, they were able to acquire all the lands that they needed. Not all, but there were two spots that was not able to get it to because the people were not giving up and the government was just trying to get it. But anyway, in 2013, they, needed, they got the land. By 2017, the foundation was laid. But you know, that's how long it took. It's a lot of land and a lot of um, projects to be done. So I don't know if it's going to be happening during my lifetime, um, but they have the, the main structure to be done already. So we're going to watch this video. It's only 15 minutes. There's 45 minutes, but I'm going to show it 15 minutes only. And uh, see what happens here. very name, Maitri, that is loving kindness. He was young, he was young. In today's young. world, we really need uh, a promotion of Maitri, Maitri, loving kindness. In Kushinaga, northern India, the place where Shakyamuni Buddha passed away, an extraordinary symbol of loving kindness is being created for the entire world. The Maitreya Project. Maitreya Buddha, according to scripture, we believe the next coming Buddha. So therefore, it is useful to make sort of special effort to make uh, sort of relation or contact with the coming Buddha. Just as Buddha Shakyamuni was recognized 2,500 years ago as an enlightened being, it has been prophesied by all the Buddhist traditions that Maitreya will be recognized as the Buddha of loving-kindness. Some cultures know Maitreya as the Laughing Buddha. A statue of the monastic form of Maitreya is being built to last at least 1,000 years in India. This will be the largest symbol of loving-kindness in the world. The main purpose of the Maitreya statue is to promote the qualities of loving-kindness in this world. Buddha Shakyamuni explained there is incredible benefit in creating holy objects. When one sees a peaceful, loving image, it makes one think of peace. A positive seed is planted in the mind which will grow into loving-kindness. Throughout the world, monuments serve to inspire humankind. The Taj Mahal symbolizes worldly love of one human being for another. The Statue of Liberty is a symbol of justice and political freedom. The Maitreya statue is a symbol of the perfected qualities of loving kindness, the essence of all religions. this statue and uh, see people to learn loving-kindness by learning the 
that teaching of the Mithya Buddha, you see. With this good heart, then, you see, wars can be stopped. Everybody needs love and kindness. From love and kindness, then you can eat freedom. Thank you, Amaz. As a bodhisattva, we don't think of ourselves alone making connection and attaining the state of Buddha Maitreya. Since we have to benefit all sentient beings, and since all sentient beings have to make the connection, if we build the representative of Buddha's body, speech, and mind, just by seeing the statue of Buddha Maitreya, one will develop love. It is a good time to build the statue now. Considering the fact it is the time when Buddha's teaching is degenerating, if we build the statue of Maitreya Buddha, the teachings will flourish and spread world peace, bringing joy and happiness to sentient beings. The Maitreya project was the heart wish and vision of an extraordinary Buddhist master, Lama Thubten Yeshe. His main disciple and successor, Lama Zopa Rinpoche, is fulfilling his wishes. Today, Lama Yeshe's reincarnation, Lama Osul Rinpoche, still carries the vision of Maitreya in his heart. Just by seeing the statue so big and so beautiful, the, uh, so much faith grows inside. So all together, this will be such a big benefit for all sentient beings. So I'm very happy and I hope it will be made soon. Kushinaga is one of the holiest Buddhist pilgrimage sites in the world. It is here Maitreya Project is planning to construct the 500-foot Maitreya statue and to develop educational and healthcare programs. So in this place, the teachings of Lord Buddha are very important and bring benefit to countless sentient beings. Venerable Lama Yeshi and Lama Zopa Rinpoche have a great aspiration to build a Maitreya Buddha statue. So I would like to make a similar prayer and dedication to this project. Amen. Buddhism originated in India. So as disciples of Buddha, we should remember the source of water while drinking. It's important that such a large statue of Maitreya be built because it will capture the attention of the world and keep the spirit of Buddhism alive. The Maitreya Project is harnessing the world's best technology and skills to create this monument of loving-kindness. Denise and Peter Griffin, under the guidance of Lama Zopa Rinpoche, spent four years creating a life-size model of Maitreya. This model was enlarged to make a 25-foot prototype by using cutting-edge computer technology. The same enlarging process will ensure that the largest perfect traditional Buddha form emerges in bronze. A world-class team of international architects, engineers, and environmentalists are working to ensure this dream becomes a long-lasting reality. We're trying to produce a, a, a contemporary uh, design, a contemporary style using the, the history and the religious uh, connotations of Buddhism from the past and linking it with uh, methods of construction, ideas and attitudes of today. When completed, the bronze statue will rise 500 feet, the equivalent of a 50-story building. For generations, pilgrims will receive great blessings here, journeying through a landscape park of thousands of holy objects, a monastery, a nunnery, and meditation pavilions. Inside the throne and statue will be over a million objects of holy art, libraries and shrine rooms at the different chakra points. The statue will also contain a rare collection of holy relics and texts. 
Lama Zopa Rinpoche is writing the 8,000 stanzas of the Prajnaparamita text in pure gold, which will be placed in the statue. Lama Zopa Rinpoche has collected many relics of Buddhist masters and saints. When construction is complete, the relics will be enshrined in a temple at the heart of the 500-foot Maitreya statue building. In the meantime, this extraordinary relic collection is traveling the world. Millions of people are receiving the blessings of seeing the relics and learning more about the Maitreya project and its purpose. The essence of the project is understanding that loving kindness is the only quality that will bring lasting peace within the individual, the family, the community, the country, and the world. Once the Maitreya statue is completed, it will be a wonder of the world. At the same time, it will bring economic prosperity to the region. In the future, when the schools, hospitals, airport, and tourist services are built, it will be very helpful. The positive effect of the Maitreya project will be truly transformational. Up to 4,000 workers will be employed during the project's construction phase and hundreds more in industries supplying materials and services. After completion, thousands will be employed to maintain the park, airport, hotels, schools, hospitals and tourist services, providing an ongoing livelihood for centuries to come. Any development of this scope is not without risk. Maitreya project will only employ environmentally sustainable techniques that respect and preserve the local culture and environment. Designed to last a thousand years, this structure must run on solar and wind resources, thereby conserving water and fossil fuels. An international airport is being built to make the journey to this holy site. The Maitreya Universal Education School currently provides excellent free education to more than 350 students. The curriculum is based on the principles of universal education, which encourages people to understand both the scientific and spiritual aspects of reality. Over time, the primary school will be expanded to include a university and function as the hub of an educational outreach program serving rural villages. The Maitreya project will also build a healthcare system with an international standard teaching hospital as its focus. This will offer treatments based on Ayurvedic, Tibetan and Western medical systems. The hospital will provide first-rate medical care in surgery and other modern procedures. The healthcare system will primarily serve the poor and underprivileged, even in remote parts of the area. When completed, the statue will have cost up to $195 million. People sometimes ask, why spend so much money on a statue? Throughout the world today, our spiritual symbols are being overshadowed by materialistic symbols such as shopping malls, entertainment centers, and office buildings. There are very few powerful symbols which encourage the development of loving kindness. Any kind of contributions that one would make, it will be a great benefit and uh, accumulating a great merit. And through such project, I'm sure, we'll uh, uh, spread the Buddha Dharma. And also through such project, we'll have a real uh, peace and harmony prevailing 
uh, throughout India, throughout India as well as throughout the uh, uh, world. And uh, uh, so, therefore, I think this project is very uh, great. I have uh, my full, uh, wholehearted support. Even, even a beggar, you know, somebody see who has nothing, gives a, a penny, a, a contribution for material. There's something very small, you just offering one penny for the statue. But the result is unbelievable. And the extraordinary merit that can be generated by this project is mind-boggling. Or as uh, Lamso Rinpoche would say, it's unbelievable. <laughs> So this is a huge project, right from the beginning. I simply admire uh, those concerned people, and especially say, uh, like late Lama Yishi and also the Lama Sabarmuchi, uh, they really I say, uh, devoted to making this huge statue, and, the, and many uh, I say, his followers really is putting effort I really admire and I appreciate. Maitreya Project invites you to be an integral part of spreading peace and loving kindness to the world. May the beings that contribute to the creation of images of Maitreya, the Buddha of love, experience the Dharma of the Great Way in the presence of Maitreya himself. So I know as the Tao cultivators, we are not supposed to be um, attached to forms or objects or statues, especially. But if you're able to uh, get mind of peace of mind um, by looking at form, uh, I think that's the only way to we can uh, uh, learn ourselves to be more enlightened. Uh, even though this is Buddhism, uh, religious site. Um, Myself, I think, you know, being human, a statue, sort of like uh, emphasized, or it's a form to me that, okay, it's not real, but I'm doing something to uh, respect to the Buddhists that are there. Um, so, you know, it's a long way, I know, I, I'm thinking, if it, this was done in China or United States or, you know, uh, where the buildings can be done in a much faster pace, that can be done in a much faster period. But because this is in India and there are a lot of corruption and they are still having a hard time getting everything together. So, again, 2017, they finally put the foundation in it. So now next few years, it's the building that you know, the structure up and uh, around it. But again, a lot of people, a lot of work. Uh, <laughs> I don't see, I don't think maybe 20 years from now, maybe <laughs> that will be done. Uh, I hope I can visit one day. I did visit one in um, a, a, a statue of the Nanghai Kupo in Taiwan. Uh, it's very beautiful. It's a, uh, it's South Taiwan. I don't know the name of the city, uh, but we went there. Uh, mm -hmm. It was very peaceful. Uh, we walked inside, and I was like, "Wow, this is big. This is supposed to be even bigger." Uh, and, um, this is it. My lecture. Any questions? Please give us. Yes. Ah. If I made a mistake or a correct spoke about the Maitreya, I ask forgiveness and um, thank you for your time. <laughs>